Hey there, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I am so excited to show you how I made this little side table right here. But what's really cool about this table is it is not just one solid piece of wood, there is a gap down the middle between the live edges to make like a river of resin. So this is a new DIY technique for me. It was a ton of fun to try, and I feel like if I could do it, so can you. So let's get into it. Before we get started, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, you can do that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. Big thank you to ETI Resin Crafts for partnering on this video. All right, so I have this very thin piece of live edge wood left over from a desk that I made years ago. And I have been holding on to this. My husband's tried to throw it out so many times, and I'm like, I'm going to find something to do with that. And it's so thin that I couldn't make a side table out of it if I cut it in half and stuck it together. It would be just like such a skinny side table. So adding this acrylic river down the middle is the perfect way to bulk it up a little bit and make it the perfect size of side table. So the first thing I did was cut it in half so that I had equal halves to make a table. And then I sanded it down really good. Now I had originally used this for a desk that I had kept the saw marks in. I really liked that rustic look, but for this side table, I wanted to sand those right out as much as possible and get the wood back down to its beautiful natural finish instead of this kind of aged silver look that it has. All right, so when I was happy with how sanded down it looked, it was time to build a containment box. So a containment box is kind of like a frame to put your pieces of wood in while you pour the resin river down the middle and it's going to keep that resin from seeping out and give it its shape. So I built this out of quarter inch plywood that I had left over from a different project. I cut down the edges using the table saw and the miter saw and then I built it on top of the larger piece of plywood that I have here. So I just did this by using small finishing nails to attach the pieces of plywood and then I just used house wrap tape to secure this to the bottom piece of plywood so that it would be easy to pull apart when it was time to disassemble. Now one thing that I find super interesting is that resin will not stick to house wrap tape so you can use it to coat the bottom or edges of your surfaces. Now, one thing that I did find is that the lines in the tape between the pieces of tape, you can definitely see in your resin pour. So I did have to sand that out. In the future, I would probably use a piece of melamine for the bottom because resin will also not stick to melamine. All right, then I moved everything inside so I could do my pours without getting any dust. So the two products that I'm using for this project are both from ETI. The first is ETI Cast and Craft Easy Cast Clear Casting Epoxy. This is what we're going to use to make the river in the table. And then the other product that I'm using is the ETI Envirotech Light or on high gloss finish. And we're going to use that for the top coat. Okay, first step is actually sealing the wood. You can either use the Easy Cast or the Envirotex Light for this. This is just to keep any air bubbles from escaping during your pour process when you want things to be super clear. So to mix up either of these products, it's very simple. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Measure them out in separate cups and pour one into the other and mix it for a solid two minutes, making sure to scrape the sides. After two minutes, you're gonna to wanna to pour it into another cup. This is called double mixing and use a fresh stir stick and stir it for another two minutes. Make sure to wear gloves and it's really cool to watch. It goes from kind of like a cloudy color to clear with a little bit of bubbles and then you'll kind of know that it's ready. But if you set a timer on your phone, this is just the easiest way to keep track of how long you've been stirring for. Okay, and then I painted this on. Now I wanna make a note about something that I would like to do differently in the future. So I put this in a containment box and then painted it on but I forgot about the edges that are touching the containment box. So of course some product does drip down while it's in that containment box. What I would do in the future is I would seal all the edges before even putting it in the containment box. Because those end cuts just seem to like soak it right up and I had a hard time getting even coverage on the end cuts here just because when it was in the forms I couldn't get to those edges so whatever dripped down kind of soaked in and now that it's all sealed like that I can't get that to look really even so next time I would coat the ends first before I put it in the form. 
All right. So that was one learning. So after you seal your wood to prevent any air bubbles from coming out, then you let it dry eight hours. Then you can start mixing up the easy cast to pour your river down the center of the table. This is mixed up the exact same way with the double mixing, equal amount, stir it for two minutes, pour it into a fresh cup, mix it with a fresh stir stick for another two minutes, and then you can get to pouring. This is so exciting to see the project start to take shape at this point. One thing to note is that you will definitely see some bubbles when you pour it. And I was nervous thinking that I had maybe mixed it too much or not enough or I had done something wrong. But as it cured over the eight hours, so I poured this in the evening and by the morning, the bubbles were totally gone. And it was crystal clear. So this is where you have to have like a little bit of confidence in the process. Now, one thing to note about this project is it is going to take you many days, not necessarily many hours, but you can only pour three eighths of an inch thick of the easy cast at a time to ensure that it cures properly. And then you need to let it cure for eight hours. So I just did a pour in the morning, a pour at night for a few days until that river was totally full. So this is definitely not a done in an afternoon project, but it is so satisfying to watch it come to life over the week or two that you are doing this. All right, so you want to make sure that you fill that river the entire way up so that the easy cast is getting on top of your wood. Now, one thing that I did is I didn't do a full coat of easy cast on the top of the wood. I assumed I would sand it all the way down and then do the top coat, but I think it might have been easier and less sanding for me if I had let that top coat of the Easy Cast River go across the entire top here. All right, so you let that top coat dry 72 hours, and then you can go ahead and you can take it out of the form. Now, again, this is a nerve wracking part, but I mean, if it's cured properly, it should be pretty solid. I didn't have any issues here. So since I used finishing nail. I used a hammer just to pop those ends off. If you had used melamine, then you would have probably screwed your containment box together. So then you could just unscrew those and make sure that you're being a little bit gentle when you're tapping the edges away to release your containment box from the cured easy cast. Once you have the sides off using a metal spatula or something, just carefully to pry it off the bottom of the containment box. And this is what we're left with here. It looks really good, but you can see those ridges from that top layer of easy cast on top of the wood panels that I was talking about that I'm going to have to sound down. Okay, now this is another part that's a little bit nerve wracking. I started on the back side because I was a bit anxious about sanding my masterpiece after it was so crystal clear and smooth. To sand down your easy cast, you can start with 120 grit sandpaper and then move up in to a finer grit from there. So you can see I'm doing that here. So the sanding is going to take you a long time. I'm not going to lie because you don't want to use a super coarse grit sandpaper. You kind of have to work slower to smooth down any of the ridges, which is why I suggested on that uh, last river pour that you let it go over the entire top surface so that you're not having to sand down ridges like I was here. At this point, I looked close and I could see the little sanding marks from using the electric sander. So I went up to my highest grit sandpaper, which was a wet sand. And I did this by hand just so I could really pay attention to getting those marks out. And once I was happy with that, it still wasn't clear. So this is where, again, you have to trust the process because you can see it's, it's like cloudy from sanding after you made it so perfectly clear with your pores. So clean it up with water and that should give you a little bit more confidence. And before we do the top coat, you're going to want to clean it with alcohol here just to get any dust from the sanding process off. I brought it back inside for the top coat and we are using the Envirotex Light for the top coat. This is a super shiny finish. It is durable. And again, you just mix it up exactly like the easy cast. All right, so the Envirotex Light is a pour on finish and I found it was going on pretty thick. So I poured it on and then I used a long stick to kind of smooth it out to make sure it got to all of the edges. And then 
after I was done recording this, I did go back and I did wipe the edges smooth with my gloves just to take care of any drips that were down the side so that I didn't have to do any more sanding here. Now, one of the things that I would recommend here that I didn't, I would have done the top coat on the back side of the table first so that I could get that crystal clear bottom of the river and then let that dry for 72 hours before flipping it over and doing the top coat on the top as my final last step. Now the Envirotex light does self-level a little bit. This is just helping to get it to all of the edges and corners of the table and give it like a really good start in being nice and smooth. You don't want to brush this on because brushing too much will kind of cause it to foam up and add bubbles into it. So that is the tabletop. I am super happy with how it turned out. I think it is gorgeous and I'm really proud of it for my first attempt at making a project like this. Let's talk about the table legs really quick. So I used two by three wood for the table legs to kind of mimic what we have going on with our dining room table. I painted them black. They definitely look like wood if you look close, but from a distance, they kind of give that metal legs appearance. For the next table that I make, I might order table legs that are made of metal instead of building my own. But to build your own, this is really cost effective. We're just gonna cut these down to size using the miter saw, and then I'm going to attach them all together using a pocket hole jig. So the pocket hole jig just allows you to attach pieces of wood together with concealed screws. So I faced these concealed screws down to the ground so that you will not see them. I did one coat of black paint before attaching the legs together, and then I did the next coat after it was all assembled just to clean up any scratches or nicks. I designed the legs like this in kind of the U shape because I wanted the stability of having legs attached, but I didn't want any supports or anything going underneath the clear river on the underside of the table. So having those supports all the way down at the ground makes it look really clean and beautiful and still provides the support that it needs to be a sturdy table. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time.